everybody, this is Caitlin and you are watching Zombie Eats Books. So I have some exciting news. I finished uh, my classes this last week on Friday. I passed my last final. So I just have five weeks of preceptorship and then I graduate and then I take boards and then I'm a nurse. And um, luckily nurses are in pretty high demand so I already have a job and everything's awesome right now, really. Um, but the best thing about all of that, besides getting a paycheck <laughs> instead of spending money on school is that I have more time to read and I have more time to post videos about books that I've read, which I am really, really excited about. So I'm going to talk about some books that I read really uh, recently. This first one is Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. So this is a collection of poetry. Um, its themes revolve around relationships, breakups, uh, loving yourself, love gone bad, uh, basically all the things that you might expect um, with a collection of poetry about relationships. Uh, this was good. I enjoyed it. I thought that the writing was beautiful and I did uh, relate to it in some parts, but it was more like a, a distant kind of relating just because I feel like the life experiences of this author, you know, the things that she had gone through were much fresher than when I went through that sort of stuff. I've been in the same relationship for 15 years, fortunately, and I've been very happy. So it's been a really long time since I've been through a breakup, basically. So I did relate to this and I did appreciate the writing, but it was just more in a distant, oh, I remember that. I remember feeling like that sort of way. Um, having said that, it does have like little drawings that enhance the poetry and um, I did still enjoy it and if you know you think that it sounds like something that you might like I would definitely recommend picking it up. I also read Ways of Going Home by Alejandro Zambra. This was written um, when was this published? This was published in 2011 by Alejandro Zambra and then it was translated in 2013 by Megan McDowell. So this was translated from the Spanish. It's about a young boy growing up in Chile and it's about an earthquake that happens and a neighbor of his, a, a young girl, and it's also about his relationship with his parents. And that's the first section of the book. This That section of the book ends pretty abruptly and then the second section of the book starts and it's told from the perspective of the author of the first section, if that makes any sense. And it kind of alternates between those two perspectives and it becomes pretty quickly apparent that these two people are one and the same. So it becomes a book about dealing with childhood through writing and dealing with the sense of being insignificant when you're a child. You know, that feeling where maybe you feel like your parents' lives are so much more important and so much more vibrant than yours because you're just this sort of cocoon of a person waiting to develop. So that's what I got from this book. <laughs> the writing was fine. The structure was interesting. It did make me think, especially the trick of that narrative where the first part is the boy and then the second part is the author of the first part but also is that boy. Um, that made me think it was interesting uh, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all uh, because it wasn't the least bit emotional. I mean it made me feel absolutely nothing and that is very rare for me in a book. I'm a pretty empathetic person and it's not hard for me to get drawn into the world of someone else and with this book I just I just didn't feel that I didn't feel any connection while I appreciated it on kind of an intellectual level like the what the author was saying about childhood and that feeling that sort of persists into adulthood even though you're supposed to be an adult you still feel that sort of insignificance um, yeah, I just, I just didn't like it. I'm going to start repeating myself about how much I didn't like it and put the book down now. So I also read Veronica Decides to Die by Paulo Coelho. So this book I did like. It did make me feel things and it was interesting as well. So this 
author is Portuguese, I believe. And let me see who translated this book, Margaret Jewel Costa. So this is a book about mental illness. It's about a young woman named Veronica. She decides to die and she takes a bunch of pills, but her suicide attempt is not successful and she wakes up in a mental health facility. And it's kind of a darkly, humor, darkly humorous book actually, because she doesn't commit suicide because she's depressed. She commits suicide because she's apathetic. Uh, she doesn't care about life and she doesn't see the point of it. And she, the, the scene where she is trying to take her life, where she's consuming all these pills is actually kind of pretty funny because she starts thinking about all these different things that you just wouldn't think that someone who's deeply depressed would think about. Anyway, um, what I did appreciate about this book was that it made me think about mental illness. It made me think about how we perceive mental illness and maybe how overdiagnosed mental illness is. And it kind of suggested that in, a, in some cases mental illness might actually just be a case of someone being very different from the rest of society, being very different from the status quo. And when you're very different and you think differently and act differently, you're considered abnormal, like something's wrong with you. And I really did appreciate that part of it. Um, however, I think that it sort of trivialized people that do have really debilitating mental illnesses. For instance, there's a character in here who has, who is diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, he is not schizophrenic. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that. It's not really a big spoiler. But um, he, like, they're talking about how he came to be in, you, you get his backstory of how he came to be in this mental health facility and he's obviously not schizophrenic and he, and it, it's more of this thing like he decides to be the way that he is and I don't know it, it for me it really trivialized those really debilitating mental illnesses because those are mental illnesses that you cannot control those are chemical imbalances in your brain and without those antipsychotics you're not going to be able to function um, you're going to be seeing things, you're going to be he hearing things that aren't there, you're going to be hearing voices that tell you to harm yourself or other people. I mean, that's, that's not the life of a happy person. Um, that's a life that, you know, you have to be on antipsychotics for and, you know, you're going to struggle to have a career, you're going to struggle to have friends, you're going to struggle to have a home. Um, and pay rent on a monthly basis, things like that. And that goes for, you know, even severe depression and severe anxiety and things like that. I mean, people do suffer from these things and they are chemical imbalances in the brain. So, I mean, I just, I, I'm probably overthinking this and like generalizing it to areas that the author didn't intend to generalize it to, but um, I just didn't. I felt like he was undermining mental illness in a way. Um, anyway, I did appreciate the conversation and I am definitely going to read more by this author. Um, so last and best, not least, is The Title Zone by Sarah Moss. I loved this book. I loved everything about this book. There wasn't a paragraph, there wasn't a chapter, there wasn't a word in this book that I did not love. It is genuinely now one of my favorite books of all time. The prose is absolutely gorgeous. The story I really loved as well. However, not a lot happens in the story. It's about a family, excuse me, and their 15 year old daughter. Their 15 year old, 15 year old daughter, I cannot speak today, like most days, um, collapses on the field at school and she goes into cardiac arrest. And the rest of the book is just the family dealing with the emotional impact of that. And she does recover um, the first in the first like paragraph or not paragraph, but um, maybe second chapter or something like that. So I'm not spoiling anything by telling you that she recovers. She has cardiac arrest and then she recovers from it. Um, but you know, there's the aftermath of that. Like, why did she go into cardiac arrest? She's 15 years old and um, is it going to happen again? And it's it 
ends up being a book about parental anxiety and coming to terms with the fact that your children are mortal. And I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. Not only did I love the prose, but, you know, parental parental anxiety is definitely something that I feel. Um, I've struggled with anxiety my entire life. And um, when I had kids, it was like that anxiety became a monster, right? That anxiety became even worse to deal with because it found this avenue where it could really flourish, you know? And you just have these obsessive thoughts about bad things happening to your kids and you, you wanna coddle them and keep them safe and it, you're struggling with that and the idea that, you know, the best way to keep them safe is to teach them to take care of themselves, which means you have to let them try and take care of themselves. So, you know, that I really identify with that. I mean, I'm I'm the parent that still goes in to her 10-year-old's bedroom at night and makes sure that she's breathing. Like, I still do that. And um, I never drop them off at school or tell them good night without kissing them and telling them how much I love them because you just never know what's going to happen. And this book deals with that kind of anxiety and that feeling so well. And it's so gorgeous. You should just read it, read it, read it, please read it. And look at the book. It's actually physically gorgeous as well. It's got these French flaps and inside there. And then this gorgeous velvety exterior that I've sort of made dirty somehow and I don't know how to make it clean. Anyway, um, read this and I'm going to read everything that Sarah Moss has ever written. Absolutely going to do that like this year, this couple of months or something. I don't know. As soon as I get my hands on those books, I'm going to read them is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, so that's everything I read. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them. I am Hopefully, like I said, going to be posting more videos like this where I get to talk about books because I don't have to worry about school anymore and there won't be that um, overload of book hauls. <laughs> there will be more of a give and take rather than, uh, you know, buying, 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 but not reading. So, I'm rambling. Uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching. See you later.